So we will stand up all together, raise our lights up to the sky with faith and love in our hearts. We will embark. Oh, oh, oh. We will be what we've been given. Okay, so I'm just. I'm just going to run through quickly what the winners were. Right, so let's see. So let's go, let's start at the bottom. The EE e. Rising Star Award voted by the public. I'm just going to go through the winners for this. Uh, Daniel Kaluuya mm. Now That is a name I am very familiar with. It's a name I'm familiar with Because of the success Of the critically acclaimed horror film Get Out From last year Which also is up for four Oscars, including Best Picture, Best Director, and Best Actor for Daniel Kaluuya. It is also it is also up for Best Original Screenplay. I mean, hardest one. I say I still need to get around to watching Get Out, but I say it's definitely one that's on my watch list. It's definitely something I want to watch, and I'll definitely get around to it soon. Uh, British short film Cowboy Dave, Colin O'Toole, and Jonas Mortensen accepted the award. British short animation Poles Apart, Paloma Beza and Sarah N. Lowe accepted the award. And now we're on to the, we're on to the, um, major ones. Like, you, you've got, yeah. So anyway, here we go. So, bet special visual effects. Blade Runner 2049. Good on them, Blade Runner. <laughs> uh, it's definitely, uh, that's two films I definitely need to watch. I mean, I mean, shout out to the, um, uh, nominees, other nominees. Uh, Dunkirk, Shape of Water, Star Wars The Last Jedi, and War for the Planet of the Apes. Dunkirk did win Best Sound, though. Uh, Baby Driver, Blade Runner, Shape of Water in Last Jedi again. I say Dunkirk, one of my top. Um, I say I did have it as an. Um, was it? Uh, if I still, if I was doing this on my uh, original channel, uh, I would. Um, if I was doing this on my previous channel. Uh, I would have mentioned that I had it in. I say, oh, I'll just mention right. Uh, I had it in my honourable mentions in my top ten films of 2017 because next to Saving Private Ryan, it's one of the best war films that I've ever seen. Uh, best makeup and hair went to Darkest Hour, and that's unsurprisingly because of how they managed to make Gary Oldman look like Winston Churchill, and they pulled it off brilliantly. Will you stop interrupting me while I am interrupting you? You cannot reason with a tiger when your head is in its mouth! That's how good the acting was for Gary Oldman. That's how good he was as Winston Churchill. Oh... I'll get to that shortly. Anyway, costume design. The Beauty and the Beast remake got um, nominated for this. I mean, good on them. I mean, they really captured the spirit of the original animated version way back in 1991. Hard to believe that was 17 years ago. Uh, Blade Runner, again, Darkest Hour, which I mentioned. Dunkirk. What are you The Shape of... Oh, sorry about that, folks. Uh, knocked my webcam out of place. Anyway. Uh, Shape of Water won Best Production Design. Uh, Beauty and the Beast got nominated for that one as well. Uh, Blade Runner again, Darkest Hour, Dunkirk. No, Costume Design was Phantom Thread. That's what I meant. Uh, I, Tonya, The Shape of Water again. Shape of Water won Best Production Design. 
And that's another one I still need to get around to watch. I mean, so many good films that I never actually got around to watching. Uh, Baby Driver, that was that was one that was really talked about last year. Best Editing, again, again, uh, Blade Runner, Dunkirk, Shape of Water. Three billboards out, three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri, was nominated as well. Definitely a huge contender for uh, the. Uh, excuse me. Definitely a uh, contender for the Oscars. Cinematography: Blade Runner twenty forty nine. Nominees: Dark Tower, Dunkirk, Shape of Water, Missouri. Original music. I say I do. Uh, this this is one of my favorite. This is one of my favorite. Um, this is one of my favorite categories when it comes to award season. The music. Blade Runner, Darkest Hour, Dunkirk, done brilliantly by Hans Zimmer. Hans Zimmer's resume just gets better and better every day. Uh, Phantom Thread and The Shape of Water by Alexandre Desplat. He was known for doing Deathly Hallows Parts 1 and 2. I mean, interestingly, John Williams was supposed was originally set um, set to compose the uh, music for the climax of the Harry Potter series. But next up, we've got adapted screenplay, Paddington 2, Molly's Game, Film Stars Don't Die in Liverpool, The Death of, Death of Stalin, and Call Me By Your Name. That's one I've not really come across, but uh, it's a good girl name, call, call Me By Your Name, won the award. Best Original Screenplay, Get Out, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, I, Tonya, again, brief mention as well. Um, Lady Bird, Shape of Water, Guillermo del Toro. And then Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. Best animated film, need I say more, Coco. That's another one on it's another award on Disney's telling. It's got me thinking. How do how did Disney films get nominated anyway? How did Disney films get nominated for BAFTAs? I mean, they're made in America technically, so how do they get nominated for? How is that even possible? Uh, anyway, uh, best documentary: I am not your Negro. I think that's a no-brainer that that one touches on racism. Film not yet, film not in the English language. L, first they killed my father. The handmaiden, loveless and the salesman. The handmaiden won the award. Let's see. Um. Now this one I'm a little surprised about. Outstanding, I think this one I'm a little surprised about. Outstanding debut by a British writer, director, or producer. The director for Get Out. Surprisingly, not in this category. I mean, given the critical acclaim the film had, I'm surprised it doesn't have much. I'm surprised it didn't get nominated in that category. I mean. Jordan Peele, this is his direct, direct, directorial, directorial debut, and he didn't get nominated for this award. That I'm very surprised about. 
Anyway, we had The Ghoul, I Am Not a Witch, Jawbone, Kingdom of Us, and Lady Macbeth. I Am Not a Witch was what came out on top. Personally, if I were to choose, I would have had I would have had Get Out nominated. I would have had Get Out win that award because I mean that's that's startling that that didn't get nominated for that award. Outstanding British film. Darkest Hour, Death of Stalin, God's Own Country, Lady Macbeth, Paddington 2, and Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. Three Billboards won that award. Supporting actor, also for the scene film, Sam Rockwell, but Christopher Plummer for All the Money in the World, Hugh Grant for Paddington 2, Willem Dafoe for The Florida Project, and Woody Harrelson for Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. Supporting actress. Alison Jenny, uh, Alison Jenny, I, Tonya, won the award. Christian Scott Thomas for Darkest Hour. I'd have had Lily James. I'd have had Lily James in that category as well. Laurie Metcalf for Lady Bird. Leslie, Manv Leslie Manville. Uh, blah, blah. Leslie Manville for Phantom Thread. And Octavia Spencer for Shape of Water. Hmm. Interesting. So, like I said, I would have had Lily James in that category. But given the fact that the supporting actor had two for, um, from three billboards outside Deming, Missouri, why not have two from Darkest Hour? I would have had, I would have happily had Lily James in there. Uh... Let's see. Leading actor, Daniel Day-Lewis, Phantom Thread, Daniel Kaluuya, Get Out, Jamie Bell, film stars Don't Die in Liverpool, Timothy Chalamet, Call Me By Your Name, and the winner, hardly surprising, Gary Oldman, Darkest Hour. Such a good portrayal of Winston Churchill. But actually, outstanding British film. I would have had Goodbye Christopher Robin in there as well. I'd have had that in there for outstanding British film. But what would I have replaced it with? Paddington 2 I would keep. And I would have, I would have personally taken. I would have, I would have put that category up to seven nominations for that one for the outstanding British film because Goodbye Christopher Robin was. It was a really heartfelt film for me. It was one, of, it was one of my favourite films of last year. Definitely had me in tears on numerous occasions. And it worked. I'm just really surprised that it didn't get. I mean, like three accolades. That's all it has. I'm very surprised. British Independent Film Awards 2017 Best Supporting Actress Kelly Macdonald. Kelly MacDonald, I should say. Heartland Film Festival. Truly Moving Picture Award. Won that. Mill Valley Film Festival. Audience Award World Cinema. And it won that as well. It's... I mean, this is an, exa this is an example of... Like The Greatest Showman, which I'll get into when we get into the, when we get into the Oscars. It's a huge surprise that The Greatest Showman didn't get many nominations for these major awards, and Goodbye Christopher Robin as well. I mean, why? Both films are brilliant. But going by British films alone, Goodbye Christopher Robin, absolutely. I think that definitely should have been up there for nominations, at least. Let's 
Look, here we go. Leading actress. Annette Benning, film stars Don't Die in Liverpool, Margot Robbie, by Tonya, Sally Hawkins, The Shape of Water. Sosha. Ah, right. Sosha, that's how it's pronounced. Sosha, right, okay, Sosha. Sosha Ronan. There we go, that makes it easier. And Sosha Ronan for Ladybird. The winner. Francis McDor McDormand, three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. Director, Blade Runner 2049. Dennis Villeneuve, Blade Runner. Luca Guadi Guadagin, Guadagin, or blah, Guadagnino. How do you pronounce that? I apologize if I spell if I pronounce it wrong. Christopher Nolan, Dunkirk, three built bulbs outside Ebbing, Missouri. Martin Donagh. I don't know how to pronounce it again. Don't know how to pronounce it. Um, but the winner, Guillermo del Toro, Shape of Water, and the big one, best film, Call Me by Your Name, Darkest Hour, Dunkirk, The Shape of Water. And three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. So, drum roll, please. And the BAFTA went to. Three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. Huge surprise there. I mean, I'm surprised that. Darkest Hour didn't walk away with that many rewards. I mean, that's huge. I mean, that's a big surprise that the bath that uh, Darkest Hour didn't walk home with that many awards. I mean, wow, who just saw? I mean, The Shape of Water had 12 nominations. And three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri walked home with five of it walked home walked home with five out of the nine nominations it got. I mean Darkest Dower had nine awards. I think no. Shape of Water walked home with three of its twelve nominations. Three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri won five of the nine nominations it got. Do uh, Blade Runner got two out of eight. The big surprise though was Darkest Hour only getting two out of nine nominations. That I am very surprised about. I'm just praying now we don't have a repeat of what happened. I'm just praying now we don't have a repeat of this at the Oscars because it looks like if this happens at the Oscars, there could be a fair amount of backlash. But nevertheless, we shall wait and see what happens. But anyway, that's my two for Tuesdays out of the way. You can see part one, which is my review of Early Men. Spoil, um, I'm going to spoiler territory. So, spoiler alert! Anyway, that's what I've got on the left. And you've got my dedicated reviews playlist on the right. So, I'll see you guys again very soon. Have a fantastic day. Peace out. Stay faithful.